and welcome to my YouTube channel. So tonight, I thought we'd come to the Smag Glen. We've had quite a lot of rain and the local burn that flows down the edge of what was Old General Wade Road, Military Road, is a burn called the Newton Burn. And normally, it's not full of a lot of water, but because we've had so much rain over the last week, there's an abundance of water, which means there's lots of little compositions and photograph opportunities all the way down the burn. And there are also, because of the way that the glen's shaped, because of some of the streams that have carved their way down the mountains, there should be some really interesting small waterfalls along the way. So let's get started. Let's look for some nice photograph opportunities. It's not the best light, but for taking photographs of water, it's really good. So let's see where our journey takes us tonight. Okay, so my first composition, there's going to be a lot of water noise here because there's two, two burns converging into one. <clears throat> I'm not going to mention the burn behind me because that's going to be a future video. However, I've never actually taken photographs of the Newton burn before that follows down the, the road here. So I've just seen the first image. There's hundreds of image opportunities here tonight. This is going to be quite amazing. So what I've got is I've got the water coming in from the left-hand side. That then joins and confluences with the Newton burn. As the Newton burn sweeps down, I've got two trees here on the right-hand side. But what I've also got down the bottom here on my left-hand side is a really nice rock formation. And the water's coming over that rock formation. And it's really, really nice. So I put a polarised filter on because there was, even though it's a dull night and there's a lot of mist on the mountains, there's still a bit of glare in the water. So I'm going to set up my shot. I've got an eighth of a second F8 at ISO 160. And I'm just focusing in to the midpoint. So I've now got, I've got a shot <clears throat> of the burn. But what I'm going to do is focus in on these rocks and then get a shot of the water coming down, cascading over the rocks, hitting another rock, and then it's bouncing again. So I'm going to move further down the burn, just a little bit, because I don't need to go too far tonight. There's a huge amount of photographs to be had. And what I'll do is I'll switch over to the other side of the burn and I'll see if there's a nice composition with those trees. And I can see another tree further down the burn as well. Okay, so I've just nipped over the other side of the burn and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a couple of shots of the trees because I, what I'm really interested in here is I'm just using the polarizer to see the mountains in the background are starting to get covered in mist and it's a really, really nice shot. It's really moody. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to zoom in on that middle tree. I've actually switched up to f11 just to get that wee bit extra detail. I've left it at a fifteenth of a second because I still I don't want smooth water, I want movement. But I've had to increase my ISO to a thousand because it is really dull in this area. But boy it's atmospheric. So just, just a few steps further down the burn, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the small tree and the burn snakes its way down 
the Glen. And the other thing that's really interesting here is, yeah, I'm really interested in taking photographs of the water, but also when you look at the dead ferns that are beside me, some of those dead ferns could, with a wee bit extra saturation, come up really nice and add a wee bit more kind of foreground interest into the photograph. So I'm just setting up my shot and I'm intentionally including all the ferns on the left hand side. It just looks like wee mounds. So I'm going to reduce my ISO to ISO 800. I need to adjust my polarizer for the water because I'd taken some shots there of the waterfalls facing back towards me. So I'm just focusing. I'll take the shot. I've got a 25th of a second, F9 and ISO 800. Um, what I'm conscious of is I want to keep the mist on the top of the mountains. And what I don't want to do is I don't want to over brighten my, my image because I'll lose any, well there's no detail, but I'll lose the moodiness and the texture of the mist above the mountain. Because my polarizer's not concentrating on the top of the mountain, my polarizer's concentrating on the water. There's a tree straight in front of me, just on the left hand side. So what I've done is I've just turned the camera over to portrait mode and what I'll do is I'll take a shot, I've zoomed into the tree on the left and I've got the, the stream coming round and just sweeping away but I've also got all the mounds of ferns in front of me in the foreground. So for this shot, I'm going to do a stacking shot. That could be a really nice image. Oops. I nearly formatted my car. Again, we haven't walked very far. This is absolutely stunning tonight. I know it's cloudy, but I just can't get over how beautiful this place is in the mist. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a shot of the, sh the burn going down, but on the far right hand side there's a tree, and then you've got all the rocks coming down here. What, what I'd like to do is, once I've taken this shot, is then flip the camera over and do a panoramic because that way I've got the tree up on my left hand side in the, in the picture or composition as well. So let me focus in on the centre of the image. Oh, big mistake, I forgot to adjust my polarizer. So let me just make the adjustment to the polarizer and take that shot. So again, I'm a 15th of a second, I'm F9, I'm at, still at ISO 800. So what I'll do is I'm just going to focus in on those rocks, just to make sure I've got three images here. I've got one of the river, eh, the stream. I keep saying river, I mean burn. One of the rocks and one of the tree. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera over into portrait mode. I'm going to zoom out enough that I've got the tree in the composition. I've remembered this time to turn my polarizer around and that'll take the glare off the water. So for this panoramic image, what I'll do is I'm just going to focus in on the center of the photo. So that's the midpoint. So I've taken my first shot. I'm now going to sweep round, take my second shot and I'm conscious to keep leaving elements of the tree in so when I stitch them together later on that'll be easier for the software to pick that up. Actually I only need three images for the panel because that's not going to work. Um, if I do four I'll just get all this kind of noise in my image. So I'm going to try 
I'm just going to do a quick bracket shot. So all I'm all I'm doing is I'm going to take probably five shots. It'll be underexposed right through to normal exposure and then to overexposed and then I can bring those images together. Oh, I'm only experimenting and trying out all these different things just to see if it makes a difference um, when we're ready to, when I'm editing. So that's done the same again. I click on that. Right, so now what I want to do is I walk further down the stream, but I'm going to shoot back towards those little waterfalls. I need to be careful because there's a branch or a small tree sprig sticking out. So I'll need to come to the side and then look back and I'll see if there's a, an image that way. attention as I was driving past because there's a really nice waterfall up by that tree at the top but what I'll do here I'm actually I am rushing a little bit because it's starting to get really, really dark. Only because the clouds are getting really low. Um, so that's a nice composition. So I'll just focus in on the waterfall. So it is getting <laughs> really, really dark. So. I'm at ISO 2500, I'm at F8, and I'm at a 30th of a second. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more and just crop that image a little bit further for straighten up the shot. Just double check the polarizers in the right place. I refocus again, and I'm refocusing on the rock just beside the waterfall. Yeah, that's a nice shot. So now I'm going to move up and then we'll see if we can get a shot of that wee waterfall at the top here. And then we've got the shot I was looking for. There's a nice composition with that tree looking back into the glen with all the mist coming down over the mountains. And that'll be a shot I can take on the way down. Okay, so I'm at the top of the fall. Um, it's really nice. The only thing is, there's no room um, to set up the small camera. So what I'll do is, I'll use the big camera so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to focus in on the top of the fall, uh, sorry, the centre of the fall first. And I've got to stretch. Now, I'll zoom back out, because I want to check I've got the polarizer in the right place. There you go. So, there. And I'll take my shot. So I've got an eighth of a second. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I love the water at the top here. So 
So I've got an eighth of a second. What I might just do is bring up the ISO just a bit to brighten it. I'll take that shot again. Oh, I really like that water at the top. That's really, really nice. So I'm going to see if I can zoom in further. And then I'll just turn. So what I might have to do here is a wee panel, a panoramic shot, and I'll use the centre or the midpoint of the image as my focal point because I, I, I am at f10 so if I take that shot see that, oh I like that, that's real nice and then if I just turn the camera around there this will be three shots as part of this panel because I've got lots of room here at this waterfall in fact I might make it four shots and just move that round a bit and there's me got my four shots. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed that video tonight. It's quite dark and moody. If you like the video, please press like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe because it's free. And if you press the bell notifications, that'll notify you the next time I publish my next video. So thank you, and thank you from the small Glen.